Welcome to this session of the School Breakfast Meal Pattern. Schools and residential facilities that choose to participate in the program must serve meals meeting the federal nutrition requirements. We are going to identify the meal requirements for breakfast in this session. Serving options for breakfast can be done in a variety of ways. Their traditional option is when students eat in the cafeteria as they arrive at school in the morning. An alternative way to serve breakfast would be offering a grab-and-go alternative, where the student picks up the meal and then they eat in their classroom. This option can also be done in a variety of ways. For example, offering a second chance breakfast after the bell, like between class periods, and providing students a time to eat or in the next class. Providing different serving options increases breakfast participation and students are settled down and ready to learn. A chart of the breakfast meal pattern requirements is provided with this training and is also available on our website. If you are new to planning breakfast meals, I recommend you print this chart and read through it. The food components and dietary specifications are in the column on the left of the chart. The required grade groups are displayed across the top. These columns show the minimum amount of food required to be served daily and weekly. There are three required grade groups, K-5, 6-8, through eight, and 9-12. through 12. When you look at the daily requirements, there is overlap so that a single menu can be used for all grade groups at breakfast if you want to plan a K-8 through eight or a K-12 through 12 menu. Breakfast meal pattern consists of three required components. A grain in the minimum of one ounce equivalent, one cup of fruit or vegetable, or a combination of fruit and vegetable juices, and eight fluid ounces of milk. At a minimum, all three of these components must be offered, but as the menu planner, you may serve more than the minimum. Breakfast terminology refers to food components and food items. Knowing the difference is important in order to use Offer versus Serve at breakfast. Offer versus Serve is a provision that allows students to turn down items but still have a reimbursable meal. We will discuss the details of this provision in another session. So what is the difference between this terminology? A food component is one of the three required food groups that make up a breakfast. The three food components to be offered to all students at breakfast are fruits or vegetables as a substitute, grains with optional meat meat alternate items allowed, and fluid milk. A food item is a specific food offered within the three food components. An example would be four ounces of juice and a half a cup of pears. These are counted as two items even though they are from the same food component. So what makes up a breakfast menu? The breakfast menu must consist of three food components and must contain at least four food items. When implementing off of versus serve, the menu planner must offer the student at least four food items from the three required food components and the student must select three items and one of the items is required to be at least a half a cup of fruit or vegetable to have a reimbursable breakfast. Let's look at a grain example of a food component versus food item. You can plan to serve a double portion of the same grain item and it may count as two food items. Here we have two pieces of toast and they credit as two grains and two items. This example seems obvious since each piece of toast is an item. However, a food component that contains a double portion will be counted as two items also. So a two ounce bagel credits as two grains, therefore it counts as two items in menu planning. It's easy to meet the four item requirement at breakfast in order to implement offer versus serve. There is a variety of ways to meet the fruit requirement for breakfast. All juice must be 100% full strength. No more than half of the fruit or vegetable offerings during the week may be in the form of juice. 
Frozen varieties of fruit should not contain sugar. Canned fruit varieties should be packed in its own juice or light syrup. Fruit packed in heavy syrup is not allowed in the school meals program. Fruit smoothies, if they are made from scratch, may credit towards the fruit, vegetable, milk, and meat-meat alternate components at breakfast. If they are commercially purchased, only the fruit and vegetable are allowed to credit. They do not meet the standard of identity for milk and yogurt. The daily requirement for fruit is one cup. Plan to offer a variety of half cup portions of fruit and juices daily to meet the one cup requirement. By planning for at least two different fruit choices daily, this will allow students to make choices and help reduce plate waste. Students must select at least a half a cup of fruit in order to make the breakfast meal reimbursable. To meet the daily one cup fruit requirement, Students must be allowed to take two of the half cup serving sizes if they desire. For example, the planned menu for the day offers a half a cup of juice and a half a cup of strawberries. The student must be allowed to take both items. It's up to you, the menu planner, to decide if you will allow students to take two of the same item. For example, will you allow a student to select two juice boxes to credit towards the planned one cup daily fruit requirement? It's a good idea to use signage to help students understand what is offered as part of the reimbursable breakfast and to help make their selections. Vegetables can be substituted for fruit at breakfast or served in addition. Any variety of vegetables may be served. There are no limits regarding vegetable subgroups. So potatoes are back on the menu as a reimbursable component. A breakfast burrito with salsa may contain creditable vegetables and be counted towards the fruit vegetable requirement. Students like variety and crunchy items, so a pre-portioned vegetable cup makes a nice selection at breakfast. The daily minimum requirement for grains is a one ounce equivalent for grades K through 12. The daily weekly requirements provide some flexibility as the menu planner but you are required to meet the weekly requirements. The chart shows the requirements for a five-day week and a seven-day week. You may always plan more grains for the day, but you must meet the minimum daily weekly requirements. The five-day weekly requirements for grades K through five is seven ounce equivalent, and grades six through eight, eight ounce equivalents, and grades nine through 12, nine ounce equivalent. The seven-day weekly requirement for grades K through five is 10 ounce equivalent, and for grades six to eight, 12 ounce equivalent, and grades nine through 12, 13 ounce equivalent. If you plan for two grains daily, you will be in compliance with all the weekly requirements. At least half the weekly grains offered must be whole grain rich. Other grains may be offered during the week, but in order to be a creditable grain, they must be enriched. You are not required to serve a meat meat alternate at breakfast. The menu planner has two options. Substitute one ounce of meat meat alternate to count as a grain after the daily grain requirement is met, or offer a meat meat alternate and consider it an extra. So the menu planner can plan to serve a meat meat alternate such as eggs, sausage, yogurt, as long as they serve with a grain item. The two items paired together count toward the weekly grain requirement. So for example, cereal and yogurt credit towards two grains for the day, a breakfast sandwich served on a two ounce bagel and one egg patty would credit as two grains and one meat meat alternate. And this menu would credit as three grains for the weekly requirement. A breakfast pizza typically credits as one grain and one meat alternate. This would be counted as two grains towards the weekly requirement. We recommend that you limit the frequencies of serving meat and cheese and eggs at breakfast to stay within the nutrition standards guidelines. The daily requirement for milk at breakfast is eight fluid ounces. Milk must be served as a beverage 
and the menu planner must offer at least two different varieties. This can be done by offering unflavored milk in a variety of fat choices, skim or 1% fat, or a flavored milk along with an unflavored milk. Several ways to provide different choices. There are four dietary specifications listed at the bottom of the breakfast meal pattern chart. The weekly average requirements are for calories, sodium, saturated fat, and the daily requirement for trans fats is equal to zero. The chart shows the minimum and maximum levels identified for each grade group. These are based on an average for a five-day week. When planning menus each day, they can be over or under the required levels but should meet the average over the course of a week. Let's take a look at the calorie requirement and how we would plan a menu for age grade groups that overlap. So for example, a K-8 through menu should be between 400 and 500 calories, meeting the requirement for each individual grade group. And a K-12 through menu would contain between 450 to 500 calories. This would be based on the same food quantities offered to all students as long as the meal meets the calorie requirement for each grade group. Final breakfast reminders are the daily fruit portion size to offer is one cup. At least half of all the weekly grains offered must be whole grain rich. Other grains offered must be enriched. And a reimbursable breakfast must contain at least three items and must have a half a cup of fruit on the student's tray or a half a cup of vegetable if you are substituting a vegetable or a fruit. USDA requires schools to have signage posted to help students recognize the plan menu for the day. Some schools use a whiteboard so they can write the menu for the day. Or here is an example of a sign that is available from our office. If you would like one, you may request a copy, or you can make your own. Another requirement is to make sure students have access to the drinking water in the meal service area. This can be done in a variety of ways, by offering pitchers of water or containers where they can serve themselves. If a drinking fountain is available, remember to offer cups so the students can have it with their meal. Let's go through some menu examples to see if they meet the minimum daily components. Remember, the minimum components for breakfast are fruit, grain, and milk. Does this meal meet the breakfast meal pattern requirements? The menu is assorted cereals, a banana, orange juice, and milk. Yes, the meal has a grain, the assorted cereals, two fruits, and a milk. Does this plan menu have the required components? Waffles, strawberries, and milk. Yes, the waffle credits as a grain, the strawberries as a fruit, and a carton of milk. In this example, to make the quantity sufficient, I would need to make sure the waffle was large enough to credit as one grain or more and would serve one cup of strawberries along with the carton of milk. This menu includes a breakfast burrito, hash browns, assorted juice and milk. Does this menu meet meal pattern requirements? Yes, a burrito could meet the grain and meat meat alternate requirement. I would want to make sure I have a child nutrition label so I know how it credits and the hash brown credit towards the fruit vegetable requirement. And I would want to make sure I know how the hash brown credits, whether it's a fourth of a cup or a half of a cup based on the weight size of the hash brown. And assorted juices, they meet the fruit requirement and a carton of milk. This menu offers cereal or oatmeal, a blueberry muffin, fresh fruit cup, peaches, and milk. Is this menu in compliance? Yes, the cereal and the muffin credit as the grain. The fruit cup and the peaches provide the fruit and a carton of milk. 
I would want to make sure the cereal portions are large enough to credit as one grain, and you would need the documentation to make sure the blueberry muffin is large enough to credit as one grain. The last example is a soft pretzel with cheese sauce and a self-serve fruit bar and milk. Does this menu meet the planned meal pattern requirements? Yes, the soft pretzel counts as a grain. The cheese sauce would credit as a meat meat alternate if I had a child nutrition label or was homemade with documentation on how it contributes to meal pattern. And the student could select one cup portion of fruits from the self-serve bar and a carton of milk. The Nutrition Services website contains access to lots of different forms and resources and additional online training. There are also breakfast production records available under Forms and Resources, and you will find the grain chart listed under Meal Pattern Requirements. The Nutrition Services Office has a toll-free number for you to call us at 800-731-2233. On our website, you will also find the information for each program specialist in the office. Click on Contact Us to see the individual staff names, phone numbers, and email addresses. We are available to answer any questions you have or provide one-on-one -on -one support for you and your school meals program. Thank you for viewing the Breakfast and Meal Pattern Training.